Mark Rogers TV with you once again at the conclusion of college football's final regular season Saturday. All the games are in the books, at least those games that directly relate to the BCS standings at the top, determining one versus two. If you've caught our video post here on Mark Rogers TV in the past, you know that we have exposed the BCS on a number of fronts as an illegitimate system, not a true playoff system, not even the 14 playoff next year but that it's simply a selection process. We're selecting a beauty pageant, the top two teams as they appear on the field, not just in regards to results, but what was the schedule and what were the style points achieved on the field. That aside, I'm going to put myself in the place of a voter who has to work within this system. So I'm not going to be trashing the BCS during this video post, but simply working within the system, trying to determine who I would select uh, one and two, and I'm going to run through my top 10 here, and I want to hear from you. In addition to that, I'm also going to play out some scenarios that we could see during championship weekend next weekend and who could possibly find themselves in those one and two spots and who has a legitimate gripe going forward. Okay, what I've got right now is Florida State number one, Ohio State number two, Auburn three, Missouri four, Alabama five. Michigan State at 6, Oklahoma State 7, South Carolina 8, Stanford 9, Baylor 10. All right. Got Ohio State in at number 2, still ahead of Missouri and Auburn because they are undefeated. That is the biggest claim that I have right there. I also believe Ohio State's schedule not to be great, but Ohio State's schedule to be on par at least with Florida State. I think actually the Buckeyes have a tougher schedule than Florida State. And that will be added to next week when they take on Michigan State, a legitimate top 10 team. Florida State's biggest win against Clemson, still a nice win. Tigers lost their second game of the season tonight against South Carolina by two touchdowns. Florida State's next biggest win was either the victory over Miami. Uh, they also beat Florida today. <laughs> the Gators at 4-8 and eight. would have been nice. To have seen a legitimate Gators team, at least an 8 or 9 win Florida team, take on Florida State. But, uh, of course, the Gators having all sorts of issues, uh, coaching injuries and otherwise, uh, and got blown out today by the Knolls 37-7. to So I've got Florida State having put together the best resume with all those components included. They are undefeated. They're the only major team other than Ohio State because we're putting Northern Illinois to the side for right now. Florida State's, uh, along with Ohio State, the two undefeated teams. And I'm simply going off that. Now, if somebody else with one loss had just an enormous case, if their schedule was just so difficult uh, that it trumped one of those other undefeated teams, one of those two undefeated teams, and if one of those undefeated teams' schedule was so inept and so weak, then I would make that case to jump a one-loss team like an Auburn or Missouri over Florida State or Ohio State, but I just don't see it to that extent. Auburn's taken on a, a nice schedule. It's an SEC schedule, and they beat the number one team in the country, the defending national champion, consensus, almost consensus number one team in Alabama. They did it at home, not discrediting the win, but they had the game at home, and they won it uh, at the wire. They weren't dominating in fashion, but uh, that's certainly a huge win for the Auburn Tigers and puts them in play with another impressive performance possibly next week against Missouri uh, to make their claim for one of the top two spots. Same goes for Missouri. They did not play anybody out of conference. Now, had a Missouri or an Auburn taken on a top 10 or top 15 team out of conference, fill in the blank, Baylor, Oregon, Michigan State, Clemson, somebody out of conference, but they did not. Auburn's best out of conference win, Washington State, and... Uh, Missouri's best out-of-conference win was probably Indiana, 45-28. to uh, Ohio State's best out-of-conference win, not a good one, over Cal, 52-34. Uh, Florida State uh, didn't play anybody out-of-conference. That game was supposed to be Florida, but we know what that turned out to be. Um, at uh, number five, we've got Alabama. It would seem to be that they're completely out of the mix because Missouri won tonight. Had Missouri lost... 
and South Carolina gotten into the SEC championship game and the Gamecocks knocked out Auburn, I could see some scenarios playing out where Alabama could have had a stake back into the national championship race. But with two one-loss teams in the SEC championship game, Alabama is officially out of it. Don't see any way in which the Tide can make a claim. All right. What if, okay, let's assume Ohio State wins, Florida State wins. I would say that those teams uh, have the, the, the most deserving resumes in going to a BCS national championship game. Uh, if Auburn wins decidedly or Missouri wins decidedly, uh, certainly if uh, Ohio State struggles against Michigan State, or for me, um, I think it's a bigger uh, case if Florida State struggles against a Duke team that is 10-2 and two and they've earned it, they've won the games on the field. Uh, I don't know that anyone really watching college football, analyzing the games, watching the teams, comparing the results week in, week out, considers Duke to be anything close to a top 25 team. And once Duke loses, as we expect, they would lose against Florida State. They will no longer uh, I would think be a top 25 team. Ohio State's going to be adding, we're assuming the Buckeyes win. If the Buckeyes don't win, then goodbye Ohio State. But if the Buckeyes win, they are adding a top 10 win to their resume. Wisconsin losing today, in a sense, hurts the Buckeyes or the perception that Wisconsin's a dominant football team. But at the same time, Ohio State beat both Wisconsin and the team they lost to today, Penn State. So instead of Wisconsin being 10 and 2 and Penn State 6 and 6, instead Wisconsin's 9 and 3 and Penn State 7 and 5. In my book, that doesn't change things. They beat both teams and uh, the wins and losses add up the same. Uh, it certainly hurt Ohio State that they did not play Nebraska, Minnesota, and their other missed game in the Big Ten, Michigan State. So you're talking about 11 and 1, 8 and 4, 8 and 4 that they did not play. And those three teams really beat up on teams that Ohio State played uh, in conference. The Iowa win for Ohio State looks to be much better at this point than it did at the time. For Florida State in conference, again, it would have been nice had uh, Florida State played Virginia Tech. Uh, the Miami win doesn't look so special right now. The Canes fell from number seven in the rankings, completely out of the rankings after three consecutive losses. Uh, they did defeat Pitt uh, on Saturday. All right. What if, what if Duke upsets Florida State? Then I would think that Ohio State, if they win the Big Ten championship game, would play the winner of the SEC championship game. Okay. What if Florida State and Ohio State both lose, then I would think we've got a mess. I would think that the SEC winner is in, no question. And who do they take on? Michigan State would then be a 12-1 football team having defeated Ohio State, Michigan, Nebraska, Iowa. Um, am I missing anybody else significant? Michigan State would have a pretty good resume at 12-1. Then you open the floodgates possibly what about the Big 12 winner? Right now, Baylor has that one horrible loss on its record, uh, having lost to Oklahoma State. Well, what about the Cowboys? They have one loss as well, way back to West Virginia, which is a really horrible loss on the road. But at the same time, that was a long time ago. Oklahoma State has made amends. They have that significant win against Baylor. They get back into it next week against Oklahoma. That would be another decent win uh, over a 9-3 and three football team. So Oklahoma State could possibly make a claim to get back into it and Baylor to a much lesser extent. Out in the Pac-12, those teams are significantly out of it uh, with the two losses, talking about Stanford and Oregon. But Florida State loses, Ohio State loses, and you've got the SEC champion, and then you've got chaos with, at that point, Michigan State having a pretty good claim to get into that championship game or how about florida state saying hey we know we lost but we still only have one loss and um it was in a conference championship game maybe they would make their claim or how about the sec playing the sec as what happened two years ago in 2011 when alabama took on lsu so if auburn wins 
and they've got a rematch possibly with Alabama. If most people think that Alabama is better than Michigan State and anybody else out there with one loss, namely Oklahoma State and Baylor. And what about Northern Illinois, especially if there are issues like we just outlined, if, if all chaos ensues next week, Northern Illinois, I don't believe is one of the top 10 teams in college football. I don't believe that they're one of the top 20 teams in college football. Uh, as I've stated many times, it doesn't matter what I think. It shouldn't matter what I think or what anybody else thinks. But again, I'm getting back into the playoff argument. So Northern Illinois, undefeated. Again, you can't compare nor are teams graded equally based on wins and losses when we start to look to the Mountain West or the MAC. But when we've got a glut of one and two loss teams and Northern Illinois sitting there with no losses, could they possibly sneak in? Well, we know based on the BCS rating system, that's not going to happen. What I'm asking you is, do they have a claim to get to the national championship game. Again, if Florida State loses, Ohio State loses, and a lot of other things happen out there. Let's say Oklahoma State loses and Baylor loses uh, their games to Texas and to Oklahoma. So a lot of stuff to think about right there. I believe I've covered it in regards to, to my thoughts. Uh, again, I'm a big playoff system pro uh, proponent especially when we get to this 14 playoff. I think that's going to be an improvement, as I've stated many times. Uh, but at the same time, just an extension of what we have now. We're still going to be selecting champions uh, subjectively, not an objective system which brings in conference champions and wild cards to play a true playoff like you have in every other sport at every other level in the United States. All right, we'd love to hear from you on the BCS standings, uh, what could possibly take uh, hold next week. Maybe your predictions for the SEC and the Big Ten and the ACC, uh, the championship games next weekend. We'd love to hear anything in regards to the BCS championship game, your thoughts on what may happen, what could happen, and who deserves what right here on Mark Rogers TV.